Um, how's everybody this morning? Good. Good. Thank you for being here. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, the Reverend Robert Flick and his wife Sarah for being with us today to help us celebrate. Um, thank you very much. It's uh, always when we're in transition, it's always good to have have good supply, and so we really appreciate um, them taking the time out of their weekend to come and celebrate with us. Um, the second thing I want to say is welcome to any visitors that we may have this morning. If you um, fill out a card in the back of the pew seat and put it in the collection plate when, it, when it's passed, um, it'll just give us a little bit more information about you that we can reach out and just say hello and thank you for coming. Um, as y'all know, um, being in transition, um, one of the first things that we need to do is um, get our uh, profile for the church together. And so one of the ways that we're doing, the main way that we're <clears throat> getting the information to do this is by having the congregation fill out a survey. Um, there are surveys here for you. When you fill them out, you can place them in um, a basket in the narthex or a basket in the parish hall. They're clearly marked where you put your completed survey. If you um, don't have time to do it at church, do not fret. If you're listening online, please do not fret. They will be mailed out one person for every, or one, one survey for every person in the household um, over 14 and over is eligible to fill out a survey. They will be mailed directly to your home and you can either bring those by and drop them off here or you can mail them back in. Um, we will, this next week, we'll be sending out you know, emails about it, et cetera, et cetera. So there's many ways that you can do this. Um, and we appreciate you giving us that information. Um, there's several announcements. Um, most of them are in your bulletin, and so you can open your bulletin and read those. But the dates to remember are we have a ministry leaders forum this week coming up, and that will be um, on Wednesday, uh, the 17th. Anybody can come. Uh, the purpose of the forum this time is to kind of talk about the year that we have ahead and how we want to plan for that, especially while we're in transition. If you have any ideas on how we can strengthen our existing ministries or if you have ideas about new ministries and what that might look like, we would welcome you coming and giving us some feedback. Um, I will be providing dinner, so please RSVP and let me know that you'll be there. And uh, we look forward to just having a really lively and um, great conversation about, you know, what our year looks like ahead. Um, the other thing is uh, we have the Magic of Broadway coming up, which should be a really uh, fun night of music and singing and dancing. And so um, please get your tickets. It's on September 24th. It'll be a whole lot of fun. And um, we're looking forward to listening to Tom play some good sing-alongs. We have our blessing of the backpacks uh, uh, next week, and um, there will be breakfast prior to that. So if you want to come early and have a bite to eat, please join us. Um, we're hoping to have um, students and our, our students and educators from the school with their parents come, and so it should be a fun service. Um, rally day will be on September the 11th. We're looking forward to that, and then um, also. Um, on a, on a more business side, um, vestry elections come up in October, and so if you have never served on vestry or if you have served on vestry and you're thinking about doing it again, I think we'll be looking for just one new person. Um, the vestry is nine right now, but we're gonna go back to seven, which is what we were, um, I think, just a couple of years ago. Um, and so, we'll, so even though I think three people are rolling off, we'll just be looking for one new person. But we also need um, a, a, a secretary, someone to t come to vestry meetings and take the minutes. It's a great way to put your toe in the water. And if you've thought about being on vestry, they think, oh, I'll, I'll, you know, want to go see what that's, what's, you know, what's that all about. And you could just take, and you have, the only obligation is that you come and you take minutes, and then you type them up and send them to Kim, and then that's it. You don't have um, you don't have all the other obligations that vestry members have, and it's a good way to, to learn more about how the church works um, without making a huge commitment. And it also is a real um, service to us because currently I'm trying to run the vestry meetings as well as take minutes. <laughs> that's really tricky to do. Um, anyway, it'd be great, and, and we need that immediately. So if you would, if that's something you you know think about doing, please. Uh, 
contact me and I would uh, love to get you on board. Um, also, we had a little usher training this morning. Um, usher is a pretty uh, easy job. Um, if we need more of them, the more people we have, the, the less you're on rotation. Um, if there's only two ushers, then you know they have to be here every other week. But if we have you know eight ushers, then you only have to do it once every couple of months. So um, if it's something, I mean, you're, if you're going to be here anyway, you might as well be ushering. Um, it's not a not a huge commitment. So um, if you want to do that, contact Kim or contact Charlie or contact me or anybody on the vestry. And um, yeah, that's about it. The rest of the announcements you can read in the bulletin. And is there any other announcements for the good of the people? John? You need more chalice bearers and people who are willing to carry the cross. You yeah, that, have, that is the truth. What John them. pointed out is that we need more chalice bearers, we need more crucifers. Actually, you know, all of our, all of our areas of ministry and service um, could be broadened, and that's something we're looking forward to um, really looking at on Rally Day and get people signed up for that. But yes, if you're interested in serving in any way, in the church, please let us know. Um, if there's nothing else, let us worship. Thank you.
uh, as I was introduced, my name is uh, Father Bob Flick, and I am very happy to be here. Uh, my wife and I are visiting from Friendswood, uh, which is about 100 miles to the east. <laughs> so, but it was a great trip in this morning. Uh, if you're new and visiting, uh, in the prayer book is the black book in this church that's in your pew or in your uh, little seat in front of you. And we're beginning on page 355. Let us pray. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work, and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Have a seat, if you would, for the readings of the day. The first lesson is a reading from Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do in my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not, it shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are its pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 80. 
We will read the song in unison. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, even Joseph like a flock, shine forth that you are in front of the fallen cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, so I will strength and come to help us. You have brought it behind out of Egypt. You cast out the nations by Benjamin. You prepared ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towers cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its sandals to the sea, and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck off its roots? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have raised upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and attend this sign. Preserve what your right hand has planted, like the burning of fire like rubbish, as the rebuke of your countenance let them perish. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you may be so strong for yourself, and so you will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, O God of us. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. <coughs> the second lesson is a reading from Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouth of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which, you, with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Jesus also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It's going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time. The Gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a seat if you would. Our readings today, uh, on the way here, my wife suggested that uh, they were hard to preach on. She had heard some uh, clergy people say that at a funeral that we were recently at. And, uh, it seems to me that any uh, hard and tough news that we get from the gospel is oftentimes hard to preach on and it's even much harder to hear and to listen to and to uh, make come alive in our lives and such is the case today. In the first reading today from Isaiah, it's first Isaiah, it's chapter 5, so we know that it happened uh, it happened um, during a time, Mike went on I think, it happened at, at the time before the fall of the temple in, or the invasion of, of Nebuchadnezzar, even the first invasion and um, in 587, it happened early on as the prophet himself was was preaching and teaching and, and cajoling the Hebrew community to make sure that they listened to the word of God and that they, uh, somehow that, that, that word of God, that the history that they knew impacted them and that they changed their lives and that they let go of their sinfulness and that they built justice, it says at the end of the reading, that they built justice and righteousness into their law. Because, of course, the law in the Hebrew, Hebrew community was the ticket, as it were, to the afterlife. In the second reading from St. Paul, we hear St. Paul uh, addressing the, the Jews, what we would call the Jews of the time, the Hebrew community, uh, the people who lived in and around, probably in and around Jerusalem for the most part. And so he, wasn't, he was addressing very clearly Jesus' own community. He was addressing the people of the law. And in the second reading 
we experience uh, St. Paul being pretty clear, recalling uh, all the great things that God did for the community. He, he was recalling, you know, he recalled in this reading how it was that God cleared the Red Sea so that the Hebrew community could go, uh, go through and the Egyptians were drowned. He recalled, you know, the walls of Jericho and how it was that, that those walls came a tumbling down as we, as we sing about sometimes. He recalled uh, the, the, uh, the salvation for the prostitute Rahab. He recalled uh, the, the great people who had gone before them in their own Hebrew community, Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and, and then David and Samuel. And he recalled how it was that David and Samuel, people who were great leaders, built this justice and righteousness into the communities in which they lived, into the communities that they led. And so it, it's not hard to then listen to Jesus in the gospel and him get kind of hard-nosed about how it is that we are supposed to live our lives. That it's not about anymore, it wasn't about in those times, you know, them calling themselves Christians, of course they probably didn't, and giving themselves this, this umbrella where, you know, we're people who, who somehow assert that we belong uh, to, the, to the community of Jesus. And Jesus is saying, I have a baptism that really matters. I have a baptism in which you are called to change your life. And you recall our own uh, baptismal promises I meant to bring my book up there. Uh, our own baptismal promises, when, when they ask us these, these very serious questions, will you persevere in resisting evil whenever you fall into sin? Will you repent? Will you turn to the Lord? Will you proclaim the word by example, the good news by word and example, the good news of Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons? Not this person or that person or the persons that we choose, but in all persons and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people, not just citizens of, of Rosenberg or citizens of Richmond or citizens of of Houston, but of all people and register and respect the dignity and uh, human dignity of every human being. Those are hard kinds of questions that, that we're asked in our own baptism. And so when in the gospel Jesus says, I have a baptism that is a baptism that matters, that calls us into a different kind of life it's not difficult for him then to follow up on this and say, and there are going to be families that are split by that, right? Some are going to say yes and do it, and that's going to separate them potentially from the, perhaps their own mother or father or, or daughter or, or child or, or in-law or whatever it might be. That somehow saying yes to Jesus and doing what what Jesus did and acting as Jesus would act can separate us one from the other. By taking a stand for justice, by taking a stand for righteousness, not with our mouths, but with how we act and how we are with each other. And in doing that, yes, separation can come. And then he recalls to them, back then, in 33 or whatever it was, he says, and look at our present day. And I don't think that translation is far off from what we see today, right? Look at our present day. Look at the division that is among us. And Jesus predicted this would be the case. Is that division coming because we who say we follow Jesus, not just use the word Christian, because that has lost 
its meaning. It has become empty. In fact, it has become, in some circles, a way to beat people up with a Bible. But are we following Jesus? Are we doing what Jesus did? Are we acting like Jesus? Are we loving each other as brothers and sisters? No matter who we are, no matter what our color, no matter what our creed, no matter what our faith tradition, no matter our, what our sexual preference, no matter what, what nation we are from, are we doing as Jesus did? Not just are we Christians, whatever that means when we unpack it, or certainly when it's unpacked in the news. And yes, if we follow Jesus, there will be division because there will be those who are not doing as Jesus did, even if they call themselves Christians. I was at a funeral this week, and uh, a man uh, said to me, are you the priest who was at Lord of the Streets? And I said, yes, I retired from Lord of the Streets. If you don't know Lord of the Streets, is a is a congregation of homeless men and women in, in uh, downtown Houston. So it's an Episcopal church, just like St. Mark's, established as a parish in the diocese, but it's all homeless people. We have about 250 uh, homeless people. That's about 10 times what we have here. Uh, about 250 homeless people on a Sunday morning for church at, at 7 o'clock. Perhaps some of you helped out there. And this guy remembers me because he helped out on, on Sunday morning. He, he, uh, he helped... Uh, uh, orchestrate the service and, and help feed people and do whatever we did on a Sunday morning. And each day of the week, we see about 150 homeless men and women. <clears throat> and it's very e easy to categorize them as homeless, right? Um, and, and so he went on and did that. He said, I, w I remember going there and how, how good it felt to be able to be with those people, to feed them. You know, he worked in the kitchen, I guess. But then he went on to say, but I heard that, you know, a lot of cities are, are moving them out of the city and putting in them in tent communities because they're urban blight. <laughs> and I thought to myself, how can you at once feel empathy toward individuals, toward men and women, toward these, these men and women who create, who like, just like me, are created in God's own image and likeness, and in the same breath, call them urban blight. And then the bigger question, how can we at once call people aliens or illegal aliens or, or prisoners, for that matter, and at the same time call them people who are created in God's own image and likeness? How can we go on to call people these different names or pe put people into these different categories and somehow allow ourselves to make them the other, the ones that we can be afraid of or the ones that we can put in tent cities, as it were, as he, as he said. We can't do that as long as we can know their names and know them as individuals and creatures of God. And so, yes, the gospel today speaks to us about what it means to live in a just society and in a righteous society. The definition of justice is nothing more or nothing less than building the law of love into our laws, building compassion and empathy into the law of the land so that justice belongs to everyone. Righteousness is the same thing. What is right and what is wrong has more to do with the law of love than it does to do with a lot of the laws that we beat people over the head. And so, yes, there is no right or wrong or black or white. As much as there is a whole lot of moral, what we call sort of a, a moral 
standards in which we ask all kinds of questions, hoping, hoping that the laws that evolve out of that are laws that are just and are righteous. And so the gospel today, which is built, you know, which we hear St. Paul talking about when he recalls all these people in their history and says, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter near as much as who it is that you are today. Is how it is that you say yes to your own baptism. And when Isaiah sings this love song to his creator, when Isaiah sings, sings this love, tongue, love song uh, to Yahweh about the the, the vineyard that Yahweh built and, and sustained and fed and promised to take care of, just as he's promised to take care of each one of us and our community and our nation and our world if we say yes to him. Isaiah goes on to say, but they didn't do it. They didn't do it. And so, What? And so Judah was invaded by Nebuchadnezzar and the temple fell and the Hebrew community were sent into, into the hinterland, into Egypt and to all kinds of places in Babylon. And they struggled and they suffered because they didn't do as God asked them to do. So yes, the gospel today is a tough gospel to hear. Not because not because it causes us to say that, that this division is bad, but because it causes us to say that there will be division and that we most powerfully are called to choose where we are as individuals. And if we not call ourselves Christians, but if we say we are doing as Jesus does, Jesus did, Jesus called us to do, if we're doing that, we know it's going to be tough. And it may set us up against even some of our own families. Today we gather around this table and we gather around it as an Episcopal communion. In the Episcopal Church, uh, we, we're kind of proud that we, we wallow in our questions rather than our absolute answers, right? It's kind of who we are. I used to be actually a Roman Catholic priest, and uh, I, I am much, much more at home in a community and in a congregation where we don't want to use the rules and the law to put each other down as much as to question who is it that we are in the face of the diff difficult decisions that Christ calls us into making. That's who we are around this table. God sustains us through Jesus. God will never let us go, as was recalled by Isaiah and as was recalled by uh, St. Paul, and as was recalled by Jesus himself in the gospel today. God will never let us go. God will never let us down. And God will never make it easy for us to live in a context where we are not perfect, but where we are constantly called upon to make decisions to love each other and to love God and to love ourselves. We are sustained by what it is that we continue to do this morning. Amen. 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 Let's stand to now, uh, stand now and, and profess the faith that we share. We believe in one God, the Father, the Lord, the Maker of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, and taken out from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the 
We give you thanks and praise as we gather here this day. We open our hearts and our minds to uh, become who it is that you are calling us into, to live into the life of uh, 
uh, uh, the promises of our baptism and to be, Lord, one with the, the Holy Spirit who is constantly among us. We ask these blessings in the name of your Son, Jesus, and the power of that Spirit given. Amen. 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 Let us now confess our sins to God, against God and against our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. And forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the peace and joy of the Lord be with each and every one of you. And also with you. We're now to offer each other some sign of the Lord's peace among us. Peace be with you. So it appears that we offer a blessing for people who may have birthdays or anniversaries and also travel. Uh, someone asked me uh, before the service, uh, they'll be traveling out of the country for uh, a blessing for safety and travel. So birthdays, anniversaries. Travelers. Travelers. Traveler? Travel with this one. Yeah, she's yeah. the one that asked me. That's right. I'm traveling too. I'm going to Mexico this uh, Thursday to visit a uh, fellow Franciscan friend. So um, I'm hoping to be safe as well. But let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of your presence among us and for the uh, safety that you provide us, a safety which goes far beyond uh, simply avoiding accidents, which goes far beyond uh, simply uh, staying out of uh, difficult times, but a safety that calls us into deeper union with you, that allows us, Lord, the freedom to see the world around us, to be one with each other, to come into contact with new cultures and new faces. Be with this uh, couple, this loving couple, uh, this week as they uh, travel to the UK and give them safety in abundant measure. We pray in the name of Jesus, your Son, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Yeah. Happy trip. Uh, yeah. yeah. A little bit of book report after. <laughs> If you are offering your gift at the table, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, first go be reconciled with your brother or sister, and then come back and offer your gift. Matthew chapter 5. <laughs>
Say hi. Hi. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us together give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your own image, and you called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, Father, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this song to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, and to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, Father, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Jesus. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through Jesus and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so, my sisters and brothers, we have done as Jesus asked us to do. We have gathered around this table and around his word, and we have said the blessing prayer. And in the spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood to each other, in the spirit most especially of brotherhood and sisterhood to Jesus himself, we are able to cry out in the prayer, that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Forever and ever. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover is broken. Sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us be the feast. Hallelujah. the gifts of God for you the people of God take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord show his face to you and have mercy upon you.
May the Lord turn to you his countenance and give you peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, God who is for us Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come upon you and remain with you today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. and joy to love and serve the Lord and each other. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia.